In terms of basic societal trends, we've got a growing population, no surprises there. Aging population, no surprises there. Always remember this increased education levels. If you've been here before, you will have seen this. Don't forget it. It's the most important thing that's changing the face of our society. And also the change in our makeup. So I've talked about the Asianisation of the Australian population, where you know almost 10% of the Australian population was now born in Asia, and obviously many more than that if you count people who were born here of Asian parents. But what we're actually seeing, and this is a function of the, I suppose, the global financial crisis and people flooding to Australia is a good place to be, is an increase in, in particularly Irish people. So people from the UK and Ireland are actually starting to kick up. So worth remembering that as a nation, we're kind of made up of different bits and pieces and it's important we're not all the same. Progressiveness, we have to keep an eye on this. Are we still seeing ourselves as socially progressive? Are we still seeing ourselves as attracted to new things and new ideas? The reason I say we've got to keep a handle on that is that what can happen when the economy takes a downturn or people get worried about the economy is they don't necessarily become less open-minded, but they do become less open to new things and new ideas. In terms of the outputs or the, the real manifestation of these views, we're actually seeing continued increase in this open-mindedness in the view that homosexual couples should be allowed to adopt children. Now a real majority view. And we're still seeing an increase in this concept of technology helping us. Computers and technology give me more control over my life. So that number's at 38.6, 39%. It's still not a majority. <coughs> it's still on the increase. But there's this battle being fought between that and concerns about privacy. We're still continuing to see this move towards people doing things on their own, in their own time, for themselves, and the move away from um, engaging in things like organised sport and organised activity, just briefly, ever access the internet. The internet is now ubiquitous, no question. 94% of people have actually accessed the internet. We've got 56% have ever bought something on the internet. And we've got something like 49% have bought something in the last three months. We make these distinctions because you might just buy it once and then 20 years later you've never done it again. The reality is it really does seem once you've bought something online, you tend to be um, in there for the long term. And we've got about 35% buying in any, in, in any four week period. So over the last 12 months, there's been a whole lot of media coverage on the plight of the retail industry. Successive cuts to interest rates have failed to provide the sort of stimulus that was needed to keep um, retail going. And for most of the last three years, retail business confidence has lagged that of all businesses. So you can see the blue line there has been, this is from our business survey where we survey about 30,000 businesses a year. The blue line has typically been below the red line for the average. In terms of technology, obviously the internet here has, has cut us way through technology, but now the biggie is mobile phones. So own or use a mobile phone 90%. Mobile phones are now ubiquitous, and that's making a huge change. And what really makes a change is when your mobile phone's a smartphone. So we can see here that red line, 16.2, 52.2, the majority of Australians now say their smartphone is their main mobile phone. That's a really big change. What it does is it means that all of the things that went online, that we did online, we can now do wherever we are. We don't have to go home to the computer to do stuff. We can do it wherever we are on our smartphone. Huge change. So what about the actual dollars? Um, the Roy Morgan data on online shopping est um, estimates that online expenditure for the year ended March of 2013 is $24.3 billion. That's up almost 12% in a year from $21.7 billion. So even with all the negative press though, if we look down here, even with all the negativity, we see the ABS retail sales number is up, up by about 3.4% and um, they estimate retail sales at $258.4 billion. But now that online retail has become mainstream, a majority actually doing it, we expect the gap in that sales growth between online and bricks and mortar to widen even further next year. Talked about $24.3 billion spent online, and that breaks down into some different categories. So travel, 
including things like ticketing and accommodation, continues to be the really big one, with about a quarter, about a quarter of the dollars, 25.1% of online spend is going into travel, over $6 billion. The other big areas, entertainment and leisure, about $4 billion. Electronic products, $3.3 billion. Fashion products, 2.6. Food and beverages, about $2 billion. And then the other category, that other quarter, the big one in there, or the big one of the small one, is reading material, about 1.3 billion. <laughs> Health and beauty, almost 1 billion. Home and garden products, 840 million. Automotive products, 700 million. Fashion accessories, 600 million. And the smallest one there is baby products at 190 million. And I thought it was really cute that people spend more on their pets at 220 million than they do on their babies. So the fast growing categories that will really impact on traditional bricks and mortar retailers include things like women's clothing, up 66% year on year. Underwear, socks and hosiery is up 42% year on year. And the other clothing categories are also growing quickly online. And so are things like cosmetics and skincare. But what we're seeing here is it looks as if the early adopters may actually be plateauing. They're definitely no longer the biggest increase. Is it a plateau? Not sure. But where the big growth is coming from are the middle segments. And that's another clue that this is mainstream. That's the kind of clue that tells us this is no longer early adopter land. This is now mainstream. Really, really important. So despite the significant growth in online shopping, security and trust are still really important issues for online retailing. And we see 56% of Australians still don't feel comfortable giving their credit card details online. And even among those who've done their shopping online in an average three month period, nearly two thirds, 64%, say they'll only buy from online retailers <coughs> they know. And 20% of them will say that they'll only buy from Australian online stores. So we, we see that people still have real concerns. They're really thinking seriously about these privacy, um, security concerns where it comes to online and are choosing wisely.